Give peace, O Lord, to those who wait for you, that your prophets be found true. Hear the prayers of your servant and of your people Israel. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. My dear brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you come to heal the souls of the contract. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you forgive the sins of the sorrowful. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you plead for us at the right hand of the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. Look upon us, O God, creator and ruler of all things, and that we may feel the working of your mercy. Grant that we may serve you with all our heart. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. From the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, if Christ is preached as raised from the dead, how can some among you say there is no resurrection of the dead? If there is no resurrection of the dead, then neither has Christ been raised. And if Christ has not been raised, then empty too is our preaching. Empty too your faith. Then we are also false witnesses to God because we testified against God that he raised Christ, whom he did not raise if in fact the dead are not raised. For if the dead are not raised, neither has Christ been raised. And if Christ has not been raised, your faith is vain you are still in your sins. Then those who have fallen asleep in Christ have perished. If for this life only we have hoped in Christ, we are the most pitiable people of all. But now Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. The word of the Lord. Lord, when your glory appears, my joy will be full. Lord, when your glory appears, my joy will be full. Hear, O Lord, a just suit. Attend to my outcry. Hearken to my prayer from lips without deceit. Lord, when your glory appears, my joy. I call upon you, for you will answer me, O God. Incline your ear to me, hear my word. Uh, show, your, show your wondrous mercies, O Savior, of those who flee from their foes to refuge at your right hand. Lord, when your glory appears, my joy will be full. Hide me in the shadow of your wing, but I in justice shall behold your face. On waking, I shall be content in your presence. Lord, when your glory appears, my joy will be full. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Blessed are you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth. You have revealed to little ones the mysteries of the kingdom. The Lord be with you. 
A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus journeyed from one town and village to another, preaching and proclaiming the good news of the kingdom of God. Accompanying him were the twelve, and some women who had been cured of evil spirits and infirmities, Mary, called Magdalene, from whom seven demons had gone out, Joanna, the wife of Herod's steward, Chusa, Susanna, and many others who provided for them out of their resources. The Gospel of the Lord. Yesterday I uh, talked about, uh, at Mass in the evening down at St. Joseph's, I talked about the, the most important thing of understanding our faith, that this is, is a relationship with God, that we are passing on from one person to the, to the next, a relationship. We're not passing on head knowledge, you know, here's a Bible, good luck. I mean, that, that's not what we're about as Christians. The Bible is the source material, but ultimately this is about explaining the relationship that I have with Jesus Christ and the relationship that Jesus wants with you or your neighbor or your kids or your parents, whoever it might be. God desires an, a, a relationship with us. And so when we're hearing the stories of what's happening in the gospel, it's good to remember that these are relationships that are being told to us, like just those little kind of quick things that you, you hear read in the gospel. Accompanying him were the twelve. You start going through the twelve, well, we start to remember who they are, what their names are, where they're from, where they went on mission in the world after Jesus died and went to heaven. Some women who had been cured of evil spirits and infirmities, Mary called Magdalene, from whom seven demons had gone out. Uh, there's a town called Magdala, and Miriam, Mary, is from that town, and you can visit that town even in the present day. Uh, probably one of my more fun hobbies that I have is genealogy. So some of you probably get into genealogy and you study where your ancestors came from. and You can take those tests where you spit into a cup and send it off and they'll give you your DNA test back and let you know what countries you're supposedly from and all of that stuff. Yeah, going back into my family history, uh, I have, I think, three different great and great great and great 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 grandfathers named Valentine. You know, Saint Valentine? That's my great great. No, oh, sorry, okay. <laughs> But he, you know, I have several relatives named Valentine. I have a, a, an aunt or a grandmother up there. Her first name is Apollonia. What a great name, Apollonia. I don't know how you make a nickname out of that, any of that. App, Loni, Leah, maybe, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. And going to Millerville you know, 45 minute drive from here, I can walk through the cemetery and there's Apollonia's gravestone. She lived in the town of my grandparents. She died and was buried there and I, I have a relationship to her now. She's more than just head knowledge. She's someone that I care about that you know, when, when I give those homilies over and over and over and over again at funerals about, hi, I'm so-and-so, hi, I'm so-and-so, hi, I'm your great, 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 great. This isn't just an idea. 
These are real people that you and I have a relationship to. The Bible is a matter of relationships. The, the catechism that we have, that, uh, that we learn from about who Jesus is, is to help us flush all of that out. Uh, for the most part, I think uh, uh, pretty much everybody in the room here has been married at one point or another. And remember what it was like to meet the parents of your significant other and how that changed your perspective of them. How it opened up this, wow, this is where you came from, this is who you are, this is what you're about. So what we teach in, in the Gospels and in the readings and in the Scriptures is to help us unfold the mystery of who Jesus is. And this is why St. Paul in that first reading, he just really kind of digs his heels in and says, look, if you don't understand that when it comes to Jesus, he died and was resurrected from the dead, that second part about resurrection from the dead, that he actually came back from the dead and we saw him, if that, if that action of resurrection did not happen, what are we doing here? Why as Catholics, as Christians, are we meeting on a Friday morning at 8 a.m.? Why? If the resurrection is not real, what's the point? We'd have more fun going to the coffee shop downtown. But instead, what we understand is a relationship that Jesus has risen from the dead, and that means something to me as a person. I have a relationship to that resurrection, and I can't live without it. Literally and figuratively, I cannot live forever in heaven without his resurrection from the dead cannot live without it. And that he would appear here for us in the Eucharist. That he would choose in all space and time to visit us as a people. To spend time with us today, this day in September 2020, Jesus will be with us in this room. Our belief is based on this relationship in Jesus Christ. And when we embrace this relationship, when we allow it to transform us, our faith becomes something more than just ideas up here in our brain. It moves into the depths of our souls and God is able to speak to us and remind us of who he is and invite us in deeper into that relationship through his grace so that one day when we arrive in heaven we will see him face to face. We'll stand now and bring our prayers before our Heavenly Father. Pray for the Christian church throughout the world that we might be witnesses of Jesus' resurrection, the encounter and relationship with Jesus in the sacraments and in our daily prayer. We pray to the Lord. We pray for all those who are police officers and law enforcement officials, those who work in our judicial system, those who are part of our emergency response and fire department, those who spend their time working at hospitals as caregivers and as people who clean and administrate the facilities, we pray to the Lord. We pray for all those who are homebound, those who are in nursing homes, and those who take care of them. We pray to the Lord. 
We pray for an end to this pandemic that is plaguing our world, for the safety and security of all persons, and for a preparation for encountering Jesus in the midst of our suffering. We pray to the Lord. For those who have died and gone before us in faith, we pray for Billy Robbins, for whom this Mass is offered, and for the next person from our community whom the Lord will call to himself. We pray to the Lord. Heavenly Father, we ask that you would hear all of these prayers. We ask them through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Pray, my dear brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Look with favor on our supplications, O Lord, and in your kindness accept these, your servants' offerings, that what each has offered to the honor of your name may serve the salvation of all, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. In Him you have been pleased to renew all things, giving us all a share in His fullness. For though He was in the form of God, He emptied Himself and by the blood of His cross brought peace to all creation. Therefore He has been exalted above all things, and to all who obey Him has become the source of eternal salvation. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. 
At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. the mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Donald, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, All glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold Him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. 
Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. How precious is your mercy, O God! The children of men seek shelter in the shadow of your wings.
Let us pray. May the working of this heavenly gift, O Lord, we pray, take possession of our minds and bodies, so that its effects and not our own desires may always prevail in us, through Christ our Lord. Uh, This evening at 5.30 here in the church, we'll have that red, white, and blue service for our uh, judicial folks and uh, emergency response and and our law enforcement and then medical care workers. Okay, so if you want to be here this evening to pray along with us, you're most welcome to join us for that. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God.